Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. So let's talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 10, episode 5, Petty Party. Yes, sir, they are petty women. Petty, petty, petty. They don't know how to let nothing go. <laughs> so anyways, we, we um begin where we left off at last episode were Kim and, you know, Kenya going at it. Kim is, Kim is like, um, you know, um... Kenya said that, you know, you pimped your daughter out to get some John Legend John Legend tickets, basically. You know, who penis do Brielle has to suck to get some John Legend tickets. And so that's when Kim got up and said, you don't say nothing about my daughter, be well. You don't say nothing about my daughter. And then she gets up and she tries to attack Kenya. She tries to fight her, but she's not able to get to her because, you know, you had Sheree and you had um, Marlo blocking the way. And she's talking all types of jump stuff jump this jump that or whatever and so then Croy's there so was Croy was just sitting outside so it seems like Croy was waiting around for his the wife com to come back out to the car because she wasn't gonna spend long there so was you know Kim's you know plan was just to roll up there and stop some mess and stop some drama with Kenya and then bounce and leave the scene like she was gonna you know walk in stop some mess with Kenya and walk out but it didn't end that way she left crying she left upset she left angry she left mad she left hurt she left betrayed she didn't even want to leave she was hanging around Nini's house outside with Croy Croy was just there what is he her bodyguard now you know he don't got nothing else to do who's watching the babies <laughs> I'm like come on like this is definitely something that was planned to happen basically because why is he still sitting there i thought he was gonna drop her off but anyways but because he knew that she was supposed to bring some mess and some drama and she definitely did and she definitely got her feelings hurt because you know kenya brought up her daughter and so now you know so kenya goes outside or whatever because you know kim is outside um, Kenya goes outside to see what, you know, Nene Leaks is doing. Nene's talking to Kim, chasing her down. Like, she even care about Kim's feeling. Like, she's really cool with Kim. Fakeness all day, every day with these girls, <laughs> these women. So, anyways, after that situation, um, that's when, you know, um, Kim says, you stupid B-word to, you know, Kenya. Kenya was like, well, this stupid B-word got you together, honey. And she showed it because you thought you was going to come in here and talk all that mess about her husband, this and that, and come at her. And she wasn't going to say nothing. You thought she wasn't going to hit below the belt. When you throw in flames and you throw in fire, you don't know what the other person's going to throw to. They might throw water. They might throw snowballs. They might throw ice. <laughs> so anyways, you know. Um, Kim, she leaves with Croy and Sheree and they run over there to, you know, um, what's her name's house? They run over there to Portia's house and Portia is, you know, Portia opens the door or whatever because Portia's playing with the wigs or whatever with her sister. Uh, imaginely, you know, she shows up and, you know, Kim is like, ooh, we, I know, I'm so glad that, you know, um, Portia lives right down the street. So we see now why, you know, Ken, Ken, I mean, um, Portia and Kim are actually going to hook up and be friends because nobody's really feeling Portia after this episode. It seems like Portia got the world on the shoulders on this show. And so, you know, she's going to, she's gonna, her ally is going to either have to be Kim. And I wouldn't call Sheree an ally because Sheree just starts up the mess. So anyways, they get over there and Kim was like, you know, I got into that fight with that, you know, B word, you know, um, Kenya, Kenya was talking about that my daughter wanted to suck, you know, John's legend, John Legend penis for my injured son can get some tickets to um, his show, whatever, which was wrong, which was translated wrong. Even Sheree said that she didn't hear that part. I didn't hear that part either. And so Kim, you know, made something up to add along with her story to tell Portia. And Portia was like, oh my God, you better stay away from her because she's going to make you, she's going to pretend like you angry, you upset, and you were problem just like the same way she did to me. You know, she talked about your injured son and she talked about your whore daughter. When she said whore daughter, everybody just looking around like, did you just call this woman's daughter a hoe in front of her face? <laughs> and it was just like dead silence. And, you know, um, Sheree and you know Portia's sister Lauren just looked at Portia like how you gonna call this woman daughter a hoe how you gonna do that how you gonna do that <laughs> it's like yo she just called her daughter a hoe right in front of her she didn't clean it up or sweeten it up or nothing and so and Kim was like you know what I almost had to beat up Kenya, you know you was not going to fight. That's why Crow is there. You know you was going to get upset, get mad, and act like you was somebody who was going to hold you back. But you ain't trying to hit nobody. You definitely ain't trying to hit Kenya because both of you guys sue. So you know the suing ramifications. And plus you got two shows. You don't want to be kicked off any show or, you know, 
So anyways, now we get back to Nene Leak's house. And, but also I got to say that um, Kim, she threw a glass or she threw something that had water or ice in it and she broke it at Nene's house trying to hit Kenya. And that right there is a violation straight up. Whatever she threw, I don't think it hit Kenya. It looked like something might have hit like her leg or whatever. But that's a violation. Let somebody threw some glass at Kim and see what Kim be calling for their head. So anyways... So we're back at the house anyways with Nene Leaks, with, you know, Cynthia and um, Malo and um, Kenya. And basically, you know, Cynthia's trying to say, hey, listen, you know, Kenya was on her best behavior. She didn't do anything tonight. It wasn't her fault. You know, um, what's her name? Kim kept poking the bear and basically it was the truth that's that that is what happened but Nene's feeling some type of way she was like yo hold your robe um get your weave get your wig together and get this together because hold your robe because what are you talking about like you know Nene feels like yo Nene was like they both were saying something back and forth to each other because Nene is like damn why is Cynthia sticking up for Kenya like she's jumping she's jumping off the porch she's jumping off the bridge for kenya and then so nene leaks is like i don't know if kenya would do the same for her well we'll find out if she'll do the same for her right we'll find out so um but anyways and i think nene feels some type of way she feels jealous about that and plus you know cynthia's having more of a backbone to stand up in front of these ladies and say the things that she's saying and so it's just like oh shit oh oh and nene ain't feeling that and so <laughs> And so then that's when Kenya was like, yo, so no, it wasn't, it's not that simple because Brielle, you know, posted something to Twitter about me. Um, she said that, you know, how is Kenya Moore going to pay for more manor and her new husband or her three boyfriends or whatever. And so she said now, since her daughter said that to her, since Kim's daughter said that to, you know, um, Kenya, she was like, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna reply because I know kids are off limits or whatever. But so when Kim comes here and talk about my fake husband is fake this and fake that and coming at me, I had to get her together and I had to get a daughter together as well. So it was no host bar. And so they're like, yeah, whatever. But you know, Nene doesn't want to go all the way on her side in front of her. But Nene said in her confessionals that um, Kim was coming at her and she was poking the boy bear. The same thing Cynthia said that, you know, she, she started with her and she kept, she wouldn't let it, she wouldn't, be, she was relentless and she just kept going. She wouldn't stop until Kenya respond and Kenya respond. Kenya really respond. She went all the way there. Kenya was like, I had to get, uh, yeah, yeah, I got that, this stupid B word got you together. I was like, you go Kenya. I was like, oh. and Cynthia, you go too for standing up for your friend because you know, we're supposed to stand up for your friend. You don't let no plastic surgery lady coming there well some of you guys got plastic surgery whatever but coming there amongst all african-american women coming in and threaten and, and, and pick on one pick on somebody acting like she runs the place like she owns the show no there you go there you go cynthia so anyways so you know nene leaks is just not feeling it because she feels like you know um people used to say that cynthia was her puppet but not anymore she's she's riding hard for kenya I was like, oh, no. <laughs> she was like, she's riding hard for Kenya. And, and so Nene Leakes is jealous about that situation. And, and that's real, like, shady. So anyways, we get to, um, we get to, um, what do we go? Where we get to? We get to, you know, um, what's her name? Kim, she's over there at Sheree's house. And she's talking about, you know, she, and so then Portia goes, you know, Cynthia has her little minions like Cynthia. Cynthia's always going to have her back. And so then Kim goes, oh, yes, yeah, Cynthia, F her with her poncho on. What's she doing with a poncho on? And they started laughing. And then Portia goes, yeah, yeah, she's always wearing her beach attire in the daytime. You're supposed to wear, don't you supposed to wear beach clothes in the daytime when the sun's out? <laughs> but anyways, but basically they were both trying to get on Cynthia about her dressing. She had the poncho and Portia basically trying to say everywhere she goes, she's wearing her beach outfit because she got... <laughs> She got the um the Bailey Lake Bailey Lake's house or whatever, and so then we get to Candy. Candy's finally back home and she's happy to be back home, be with her son Ace. Don Juan's in the studio, and guess who calls up? Guess who wants to come through? None other than the Bone Lady herself, Sheree. Sheree comes through or whatever. But before then, that's when Don Juan was like, "Yo, we gotta double check whatever you know Sheree tells us because you know she don't get the story right. She messed up. She messes up all the time. You know what I'm saying?" So anyway, Sheree gets in there and she tell you know she graduates you know Candy for you know the cover of Essence. They hug, give each other five or whatever. And so, you know, um, 
Sheree was just like, yo, listen, this is what happened. You know, um, Kim said that, you know, you know sh um, that Kenya had said that her daughter want, her daughter was, you know, trying to get, her daughter was trying to get some tickets, some John Legend tickets by giving a blowjob for her injured son or whatever. And so then that's when Don Juan was like, that don't even sound like something Kenya would say. Kenya would not say your injured son. She was, you know what I mean? Like, we all know. And so then it was like, so, so you heard that too? She was like, no, I didn't hear that. But that's what Kim said or whatever. And it was like, oh, okay. They had to get it right, get it right. <laughs> and, um, but if they didn't ask, you know, Sheree, if she heard the same thing, you know, she would have just been like, that's what, you know, Kenya said. But they got her right and got her together. But she was like, I didn't hear that either. But that's what Kim said. And that's when Don Juan was like, yo, I, I can't picture her saying that at all. And then um, I was like, mm, mm, mm. I was like, Candy and um, and Don Juan know what's up with Sheree. They know that she don't be getting the story. But I was like, oh, goodness. So they... It, it was pretty lit though. I was just, I was just so happy when Kenya got um Kim together, cause Kim, like you know, where you're supposed to be calm, you're supposed to be cool, cause um, you know, um, Kenya was calm, cool, and collected. Like she said what she had to say, and she sat back down or whatever. But anyways, even though Mala was like, I had to hold Kim back from beating you up, um, <laughs> Kenya. <laughs> well, we don't know if Kenya can fight or not or whatever, but it is what it is. And so then. That's when, so Sheree and Candy are still talking. And then Candy was like, so the other brawler wasn't in the building. The other street fighter, Portia, she wasn't there. Like, no, Portia wasn't invited. And Sheree is like, I'm and um, Candy's like, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyways, that's when Sheree invites Candy to go to San Francisco. She tells her everybody's coming. But we find out that Kim is not going to come. But Candy's like, she's going to come because she's not going to miss the drama for nothing. So she's going to basically, she's going to go. So we get a scene with Noelle and Cynthia and Noelle so smart so cute so beautiful and she decides not to move to North Carolina or whatever she was supposed to go where Peter lives at because you know what she thinks she's too young to be in a serious relationship and she wants him to she wants him to saw his oats and she wants to saw her oats too as well and she thinks that maybe they should live a little before they be totally committed to each other and her boyfriend Jay is like it's either all or nothing so they broke up she's staying home she's gonna stay in Atlanta with Cynthia so Cynthia has done a great job with raising Noel to be very independent to be smart and make really grown decisions not childhood not childish decisions not kitty decisions not decisions based on emotions so that's cool and then so Cynthia talks about her date and you know and so Noel was like so is he feeling you do do you think he's feeling you I was like yo. I was like yo um, so, anyway, so, she talks about Will, Will calls Cynthia, talk to her before she goes on her trip, or whatever, so it's all good, all the girls are gonna be going to San Francisco, and everything, so then we get, you know, um, Kenya and Cynthia, they meet up, and Cynthia brings Kenya some beautiful, you know, white roses, because Cynthia, I mean, because Kenya lost her grandmother, her grandmother's the person that raised her, because her mom didn't want her when she was a baby, and she took care of her, she passed away not too long ago, so Cynthia shows up with roses, because Ken, Kenya's husband ain't gonna be filmed, so we don't know if he was here or there, or if he was around or anything, so basically from that situation, um, she is, you know, that, you know, since it's just comforting Kenya, basically, Kenya is going to get things together for her grandmother's funeral, the pictures and things like that. And they talk to each other. She tells her about the trip to San Francisco. If she wants to come or not, she might, she might not, but she, we know that she's in the, she's going to come. So it really seems like, uh, Kenya and Cynthia are true friends. Like they really are like friends, but it's just that, you know, people question it. Cause why wouldn't you invite her to your wedding? They are friends, but they still work together, too, and things just slip. You know, Cynthia was slipping a minute. <laughs> so Cynthia used to be the old-school bone lady, but Sheree came and cleaned that bone back. So anyways, everyone's getting ready to go. So we get Greg. Greg is on 10 to 15 medications, but he is doing better. Nene tells him that she's bouncing to go to San Francisco. <laughs> he was like, you got to do what you got to do, honey. You got to make that money, baby. And so guess who shows up? None other than Milo. She so shows up looking nice. She goes into Nini's closet. Nini gives, you know, Milo her props because Milo and Nini did, Nini did fall out a while ago. And, you know, um, Milo was saying that she taught, 
you know, um, Nene how to dress, how to look, how to wear hair. Because we know Nene used to look way different back then. And so it is true. And so Nene gave her a props. And since you taught, you said you taught me how to dress and how to put things together. Look, if you look at both of my closets. Look at this. I learned from the best. She was like, oh, yes, you did. Because I remember Nene going over there to Milo's house and going through her closet and this and that. And how it was well organized. Nene's closet was together. I would want her closet and all them shoes. I'm telling you. So anyways, Nene invites her to go to, you know, San Francisco with her without getting permission from Sheree. And then also then, um, um, what's her name? Milo was like, so what's going on with you and um, Portia? She was like, ain't nothing going on. She said, the door is closed. The door is closed. It sounds like an old school song from back in the day. So anyways, um, Milo was like, well, can I say hi to her? Can I say hello or whatever? And she was like, yeah, you could do that. She was like, because you know how you get. And she was like, um, so she was, so um, Nini was like, since, you know, Kenya, since, you know, Cynthia's all up Portia's, I need somebody to have my back. I need my, I need my girlfriend here. So it seems like Nini kind of be using people when they're good for her before, you know, Milo wasn't good for her no more because Milo was friends with Kenya. So now Nini's back friends with Milo. Milo is going to you know, do whatever she can to be on the show so she can get people to see who she are, who she is and possibly become a main cast, at least something. She's been on the show forever, back and forth. But anyway, so she was like, oh, so you ain't jealous? She was like, no, I'm not jealous. It just seems like it's all weird how Cynthia's up Kenya's, you know, tail or whatever. So Milo was like, you sure you ain't jealous? She was like, no. So they're going to go to California first get the car because uh, Milo needs to buy a car or whatever. And Nene was like, oh, when I brought my car, I brought it from California, so they got to brag. So anyways, boom, they're going to be going to San Francisco, and Nene has and Nene has her back up, and that is Milo. And she said Milo has her back. Cynthia has, you know, Kenya's back, and Milo has her back. So it seems like, you know, um, Nene's kind of a user. You're only good when you're supposed to be good. So anyways, they all arrive to the airport. Um... Sheree arrives first, then Portia arrives, Candy arrives, and Candy was, and they was like, oh, you didn't pack that much, and so that's what Portia said to, to, um, Candy, Candy just looked at her and ignored her, and Cynthia was like, oh, it's getting kind of very uncomfortable, and so then they're walking towards, you know, getting on their flights, and Portia was like, oh, well, everybody that here is just the people that need to be here and supposed to be here and forget the rest of them, and then Candy's in the background was like, no, one more person could be missing, and so that's when Portia was like, what, huh? <laughs> it's like, yo. So anyways, they get there to, the, they get there to um, San Francisco. They get on the bus and everything. The bus is kind of like a, 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 not not so much of a smooth ride. So then, you know, um, what's her name? Sheree. She asks, she asks, um, not Sheree. Um, Candy asks Sheree, asks um, Cynthia when the last time she had sex. Cynthia was like, I can't tell you. She don't know. And she asks Portia. Portia said five months ago. And Candy laughed. And Portia was like, why you laugh? And she was like, oh, just cuz. And so then they ask Sheree, they find out Sheree is dating some guy named Tyrone that Nene and um, Sheree knows from a long time ago. But when Sheree was dating him, they had broke up. And then when she got back with him, she found out that he was in prison. So she's dating someone that's in prison. I don't know. It's up to her. She's grown and she's an older woman. So maybe she can make a better decision. But you... Um, but, like, I did a video about some guy that was wrongly accused and locked up. And what helped him out was having a strong woman with him. But I don't know what type of situation this is. So, anyways, moving on. I'm not going to down it or up it. So, then moving on from that, then, you know, um, they say, you know, um, what's her name? Candy was like, you know, that counseling is doing you some good or whatever, that life coach. And that's when Nene jumps in and was like, because Sheree usually don't open up and talk about guys that she's dating or messing with. Nene was like, I could be a life coach, but don't tell me if you don't want the truth, then don't talk to me. Cause I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you how it is, but don't get mad at me. When I tell you, you don't want to hear it and let them bullets fly. Let everything fly. If it hits you, it hits you. But I'm really talking to, you know who I am talking to Portia. <laughs> I'm like, yo, <laughs> Portia is going to have it, but you know, Know what Portia got a backbone she got a strong back she's gonna be here dealing with this crap because she's gonna be getting it and I see why she, I see why she has to you know what I mean 
hang over there with Kim because it seems like everybody's turning against her. But it's her doing as well. She has to learn how to make amends and apologize. She just got to be humble. And she's not humble. That's the thing. She's not humble right now that she still has the opportunity. She's still on the show. If she was, more, if she was humble, it would be more cool. So anyways, they get to the hotel. Everybody's at the hotel. Even Milo's at the, ho Milo's at the hotel. She already got her room. She's already there. But she's already been there. See Nini's closet? It was, it was epic. And so then... Anyway, so then Milo, she's getting dressed, and Milo looked nice. Whatever she put over her head was beautiful. And so they get down there to get ready to have dinner. Everybody's down there at the table. And then all of a sudden, Sheree starts off the drama talking about, that's why Portia really don't got no friends. That's why she got to run the camp. So Sheree was like, well, you, you know, let's talk about the elephant in the room. You know, you didn't invite Nene. You didn't invite Portia to your party. And Nene was like, no, no, don't say Nene this and that because this lady said the door was closed. The door was closed. And then they're going back and forth arguing at each other and she was like no you angry no you angry no you angry no you tried to get me fight you know you tried to get me fight and you talk about me all the time and he was like well you talk about me all the time on this nation then they showed the clip of you know Portia talking about Nini tried to put a curse on her and all this and that they showed the clip of Nini talking about freaking frat need to be gone and so Nini was like, oh, so you mad because you thought I was trying to take food off your table. So that's when Nini said, well, you tried to take food. Well, you took food off of Phaedra's table. And then Nini goes in, well, you should you should be accountable and held to what you did to to um, Candy. What you did to Candy was wrong. And so then Portia was like, so you standing up So you standing up for Candy? She can't fight her own battles? She was like, you need to you need to be held to the fire. And then that's when Portia was like, everybody needs to be held with their own consequences and things that they do. Because basically Portia was trying to say that she had nothing to do with the situation with Phaedra getting fired and all that other stuff so you know she's on that bull crap and everybody's like own up take responsibility and it was like you haven't even took responsibility you you don't do the whole blame on Phaedra like you had nothing to do with it you didn't even try to find out if the information was correct before you started talking about it or you didn't sit down with Phaedra and really get the true story from her and find out what was going on so anyways, they go back and forth. Nene's hair is falling off. See right there, her ponytail is falling off. This and that. They, and it was just like, no, you angry. No, you angry. So you was angry. So it was all kiddish. They could have, they could have, um, they could have worked it out in a better way. They didn't even have to go there. But Nene is in her feelings, and Portia's in her feelings, and no, and Portia's not gonna back down. I think Portia do wants to po possibly apologize and be on the good side but she ain't gonna be going around kissing nobody's butt that's what she's not gonna do and then when they talking about anger management Portia was like you need um, um Nene said you in anger management and then so that's when um Portia goes well you need anger management <laughs> they need counseling so anyways peace I'm all one love